Hey everyone, it's Megan, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post college, tech, and lifestyle videos every weekend, so be sure to subscribe down below for more content. I actually didn't post a video last weekend, and that's because I had a lot of technical interviews this week. I was so stressed out, and I was basically just spending the entire weekend doing prep for my interviews. And that leads me into my topic for this week's video, which is how to actually prep for technical interviews. Now, when you talk about technical interviews, there are three main types. The first is coding challenges, which is just something online when you aren't actually working with anyone and it's just yourself and something like hacker rank or leak code, and you're just writing code to run through test cases. The second type of technical interview is when you're actually with a person and you're writing code live. So like an interviewer from that company, someone who's normally an engineer, will work with you and give you a problem that you have to write code for. The last type of technical interview that I've run into is when your interviewer is asking you questions about just technical concepts in general, and it doesn't actually involve writing any code. They're really just making sure you have a good understanding of technical concepts. For the formatting of this video, I'm going to be giving an overview of each type of interview, and then at the very end, I'm going to be giving some ways that you can prepare for them. So if you only clicked on this video to figure out how to prepare, you can go ahead and skip to the part where I do it. I'll put a timestamp here and also like chapters in the little bar below. So just skip ahead to whatever you're interested in. So first up, I'm just going to be talking a little bit more about the technical coding challenges where you aren't actually working with an interviewer. The whole purpose of a coding challenge is for a company to gauge your technical skills and ability before they actually spend the resources and time on sending someone to actually interview you. Basically, the way that these work is that your recruiter will send you a link to a coding challenge and give you some time frame of when you have to start it by. Now, usually once you click start, it gives you like a little timer and you only have a set amount of time to actually finish the coding challenge. So you can start it within a broader time frame, but then you have to finish it in a couple of hours from within the time you actually open it. And this is, I guess, just to kind of make sure that you can code in a time crunch and not like spending hours and hours and days and days doing research and getting help from your friends. In terms of how long they give you to actually write the code, I've seen anywhere from like an hour to like six hours. In terms of the number of questions, I think typically I see like, two to three questions, maybe four if it's a really hard one, but I think usually it's just two to three. So how do you know if you're actually doing well in an interview like this? Basically, I think that you should be focusing on passing all of the test cases and also making sure that your runtime is kind of up to par of what they would expect. So when you're writing this code, you have to make sure that you're doing things efficiently because most companies will also test for runtime. If your code isn't really up to par with what they would expect, you might miss out on a next round interview. Another general tip that I have here, typically in your comp sci classes, they always really emphasize that you need to be commenting your code and making it well documented and like pretty and have good names for all of your variables and things like that. I agree with that 100%. However, I do wanna caution you they don't look at your code in these coding challenges. Like pretty much every company that I've gotten a coding challenge from says that they don't look at your code at all, so you really don't have to worry about things like that here. And instead focus on passing test cases, making robust test cases, and also making your code fast. So when you're actually doing a technical interview with a person, they're either going to ask you to write some code or answer some technical questions. I've had interviews where it's either all one or all the other, but I've also had interviews that kind of do like a little mix of the two. So I think it's a good idea to be prepared for both. For the interviews that require you to write actual code, I've developed kind of a formula or step-by-step -step process to kind of like ace the tech interview. And of course, this might not work for every company, but I found that it works pretty well for me. The first step is to just listen to the problem statement, read whatever they've like given to you, read whatever test cases, and then talk it through with your interviewer to make sure you understand it well. So this typically for me means like I'll reiterate what the question is asking, make sure I understand all of the possible inputs and the expected output, and also just kind of like ask any clarifying questions like, oh, am I guaranteed that this is going to have some data in it or should I check for that? And just like general questions to make sure I understand. Make sure you give example test cases before you even start talking about an algorithm because this is called 
called test-driven development, where essentially you make your test cases before you even start thinking about an algorithm. That way you make sure that you're testing robust things and not just testing based on what you know your algorithm can handle. After you go over your test cases, then I would start just talking out your algorithm to your interviewer without writing any code at all. Now, if you're on a time crunch and your interview is really short, I think this step you can skip out on, but I do think it's really beneficial in just showing your communication skills. Plus, if you give an overview of your algorithm before you start coding, your interviewer can kind of nudge you in the right direction if you're making some sort of glaring error. So if you're about to take your code in the completely wrong direction, your interviewer will normally say something like, have you considered this? Or like, mm, I'm not sure if that's entirely right. Like, do you have any other ideas? That way, before you write any code and waste time, you can just kind of know that you should start rethinking your algorithm. After you do that, you can finally start writing some code. So go ahead and write out the code for your solution. I like to really talk through that step where like, I'm just like, okay, I'm doing this because of this, or like this piece of code relates to this part of the algorithm, just to kind of show that I can think and talk and write code at the same time. It also shows like some good communication skills, but just kind of do whatever you're comfortable with. When you finish your algorithm, do not just say, yeah, okay, I think I'm done. If you do that, then they take that as like you like submitting your final answer. So don't say like, yeah, I'm done. I think that's right. You have to go through the test cases that they gave you or that you wrote and make sure that you don't have any bugs. I've heard from so many companies, interviewers, mentors, mock interviews, just everywhere that if you just go ahead and say, yeah, I'm done and your code has a bug, then you lose points because your code doesn't work. But if you run through your test cases and find the bug on your own, then you essentially get credit for writing correct code on your first try because you found the bug yourself. This also might earn you some brownie points because it shows that you're good at debugging code, like essentially just like stepping through and thinking about your algorithm before submitting it. Lastly, I think it's a really good idea to give a brief overview of your runtime, even if they don't ask about it, because I think that it just shows that you're cognizant of runtime and you know that efficiency matters. And typically they ask it in interviews anyways. So if you say it before they ask, it might make you look extra good. For technical interviews that don't require coding, typically they'll just ask you technical-ish questions based on what you should know from the classes on your transcripts. I would say most commonly they ask everyone about general data structures and algorithms things. So like what data structure would you use to do this? Or can you tell me a little bit about the runtime of this sorting algorithm or which is better, this sort or this sort? And just like general types of questions like that. And I've also had a question like, okay, say you have like this chunk of C code, is this variable stored on the stack or on the heap? I can almost guarantee you that they won't ask you something that you don't know or like you wouldn't have already learned based on the classes you've taken. However, in the case that you don't know a question that they've asked, which has happened to me like plenty of times, sometimes you just genuinely don't know, there are a couple of things that you can do to still make yourself look good. One of my general rules for technical interviews is like, it's important to show that you're able and willing to learn and also that like you can kind of think through problems even if you don't necessarily know the answer to them. If I don't know the answer to something, I typically will say something like, I wanna preface this by saying that I don't actually know, so I'm kind of just like trying to go based on my intuition and past experiences, but based on blank, so like some past thing that you've learned and you do know, then I would assume that it would work like blank and then give like kind of like almost a guess, but you're giving reasoning for your guess. I would only do this if you have some sort of reasonable guess and you're not just totally spiraling and like giving a random like buzzword that you've heard. If you have absolutely no idea whatsoever, I would typically just say something like, yeah, I'm really sorry. I don't think I've ever learned that, but could you explain it to me? That way you show them that you're willing to learn and you're also just honest when you don't know things. So now that I've given an overview of the three types of technical interviews that I've encountered, I wanna just give a brief description of how I personally like to prep for each of these interviews so that you can also go ahead and start prepping for any technical interviews you may have. For the coding challenges, I honestly think the only thing you can really do here is do like leak code or hacker rank grind and just do a ton of practice problems so that you can really nail down your code writing speed and your ability to detect like efficiency problems. I would just go to hacker rank or leak code and just go through some like easy to medium problems. I don't think you'll ever really see a hard problem in a coding challenge. 
and just kind of do some practice, make sure your runtime is good, make sure you can write the code quickly. If you're looking for something a little bit easier, like if you're more of a beginner to coding and you find Hacker Rank or Leap Code to be very challenging, I also recommend this website called Coding Bat, which has pretty basic like general Java and Python problems that you can work through if you aren't really ready for something as intense as like Hacker Rank or Leap Code. I will also say Leap Code has like a mock interview section where like you can just go and do like two to three mock interview questions and they're like almost the exact same structure and format as the actual coding challenges. So if you want to just sit down and do a real like practice coding challenge, I would recommend doing that through Leap Code. For interviews where you have an actual interviewer sitting with you and you have to write code in front of them, I think the best way to practice for this is getting either a friend or a peer or a mentor that also is working in tech and just ask them to give you a practice problem. And that way you can practice talking through your ideas with someone to make it feel a little bit more natural when you're in the actual interview. To prepare for the general technical questions that are just testing your knowledge of concepts that you've learned, Honestly, I feel like you just have to study for this. I would say you have a pretty good understanding of the basic concepts for all of the CS classes you've taken and just make sure that you understand all of the like basics like data structures and algorithms and basically just kind of brush up on anything that you've learned and then just kind of study for them and you might be able to find like a list online of like questions that people have gotten in these types of technical interviews. But yeah, I think here you really just have to kind of know your stuff. All right, <laughs> I covered a lot in this video. It might have been a little overwhelming. I know technical interviews are like the scariest part of recruiting. So if I missed anything or you want me to clarify on some things, just leave a comment down below asking me whatever questions you may have and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like so that I know to make videos like this in the future. Additionally, if you want to see more of this, subscribe to my channel down below for more tech, college, and lifestyle videos. And right now, because it's recruiting season, I've been posting a lot of recruiting content, but in the summer, I'll be posting tips for internships or starting your full-time job. As always, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!